code interpreter for chat GPT was just recently released. Some people are saying it's like GPT-5. And I have some questions about how this is gonna help programmers out. Code interpreter has the word code in it. So what does it mean? I've used GPT-4 before for generating code, checking code, generating tests. These are the things that it's good for. How is code interpreter any different and is it better? Well, the number one thing that I can see right now where code interpreter wins over just plain ChatGPT is with file uploads and downloads. So I've asked ChatGPT with GPT-4 to generate a file that contains a Python script and provide a download link. Can't do it. It cannot do that. It says, here is your code. But if you want to use the code, you better generate your Python file yourself. As an AI model developed by OpenAI, I don't have the capability to run the Python script or access your local file system to create a file. But is that really true? I mean, it is true. It can't access my local file system, but Code Interpreter can create a file and it can provide a link. And that's what I did. So I decided to test it out a little bit. I ran some examples. Here I have uh, Windows running on my Mac inside Parallels and I have a project in there running inside Visual Studio. Studio. It's a project I use for some of my demos for some of my courses, and it's running a Blazor application. Now, I have some sample data in here. This is an issue tracking system where you can filter things and sort things. And if we take a look at the items, these are fake data items that are used for the demo, and they don't make any sense. Look, frictionless expedite architectures, blandest voluptus expedite. This is pig Latin, lorem ipsum, some people call it, but it's fake and it doesn't look real. You can't search through it because the words don't make sense. So the idea is to grab real issues from GitHub and there's already one published, a subset of it right here on Hugging Face. I'll provide a link for this down below if you wanna check it out. This data sets issues with comments. It's a JSON L format and I've downloaded it and it looks, well, it looks kind of like this. It's a big mess. It's got all kinds of URLs and an unnecessary metadata I don't need. It also doesn't exactly fit with the metadata or the schema that I'm using in my app. So I wanted to use Code Interpreter to convert or transform this data into my format that I'm accepting. And well, here's what happened. Code Interpreter allows me to upload a file. So I've uploaded the file right here. That's the starting file that I downloaded from Hugging Face. It analyzed the file. It extracted the schema. Then I uploaded the file that my app accepts with a fake data and I asked it to map from one to the other and it did that for the most part. It did the title, it did the description, but it missed a few fields. And here is where the fun starts. It allowed me to download the file that I transformed right here. I can click this link and it downloads the file so I can use it now in my application. It's a two and a half or three megabyte file. You can't paste this into the body of a message in your chat box here to have GPT-4 with ChatGPT analyze that because that's gonna be too big of a request, but you can upload a file that's up to, I believe, 100 megabytes, have it process that file, and give you the processed result as a downloadable file using Code Interpreter. It didn't do the full job, so I gave it a little bit of help. I said, map the title to the title field, map the created date to the date created field. Notice I didn't even specify name of the actual field. I just said the created date, and it figured out what was the created date based on the source data. It gave me a new file to download. It called it transform FS items new. <laughs> We know the problem with naming things that because there's always gonna be another one. Well, it gave me date created. It gave me dates in this format, which is uh, epoch time. And I wanted it in this format, which is the ISO time and as a string. So I told it, convert it. And it did it. It converted the, the, the date into the new format. I also said to add uh, an estimate field, which is a random number between one and 20. A priority field is set to medium, which I might change later. And a type field set to PBI, that's a type of item. It did all these things and gave me a new file called transformed FS items final. Don't call things final because they're not final, but nonetheless, we got a file. I ran it, um, there was a problem because the ID field was not mapped. So I told it to map the ID field. It did that. At one point it forgot uh, the initial file. I think uh, some time might have passed. So it asked me to re-upload the file. I re-uploaded it and it gave me a new file called transformed FS items final with ID. <laughs> Come on, you know better than that. Don't name things final. Don't name things new. All right, that was good. 
But my project has items and it also has users that are mapped to each item. So each item, each issue has a user and that's users from this file, FS users. These are just random users with avatars. I wanted to keep these intact, but I wanted to randomize these users across the items. I uploaded the new users file. I asked it to map a new assignee field in the new file that it's creating and randomly pick users to spread them out across the items and it gave me a new file to download transformed fs items final with id and assignee <laughs> i ran this again with the new data but the integers were clashing because some of the ids were the same so i told it now make sure the item field is unique and it repeats and every time it does the job it shows me what it's doing in python code so i could theoretically just save this off if i wanted to reprocess my files again later in the future I could save us as a Python project and it shows all the code of how it did it. This took about half an hour to do using ChatGPT with code interpreter and it probably would have taken me a little bit longer to <laughs> process the file and I would have gone on some tangents like making it uh, more robust uh, but who cares my final file is done. I only needed to do this once I pasted it into the fsitems.json file and I ran my app and there we go. I have over 3,000 actual issues from GitHub in my app. My users are now mapped to each of the issues so I can filter by them and I can see these in a list. And these now have real names and real words in there, including little emojis that people are putting into their issues. And I have real descriptions. So I can search through this now. It's um, actual data set that's real. So that's one example of using Code Interpreter and it's a pretty handy one, especially because I just want to get on with my day and get on with coding my project instead of manipulating data. Are you curious to learn more about Code Interpreter? I actually did run it to generate some code for me, some JavaScript code, some C++ code, and I'm curious to dig a little bit more into it. What about you? Have you used Code Interpreter yet? Leave a comment down below. I'd be really curious to find out how you're using it, and uh, maybe if enough people are interested in it, I'll make another video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.